Right, gentlemen and ladies, uh, Anand here back for the deep dive presentation. I'm going to be following the same basic narrative that was set up by Clarence and me in my previous presentation, which is basically the four uh, important principles. Number one, fetch your data and prepare it, cleanse it. Second thing is decide what it is that is important to you in terms of the reporting and make sure that you have that before you set out to build your visualizations that actually match what it is that you'd like to see. And then finally decide who needs to see this data, who needs to be your collaborators, and then uh, find a way of, of getting that data to them. So this is our basic uh, narrative today. Uh, since this is a deep dive uh, session, I'm going to be touching on some of the more advanced uh, features in the product itself. So to begin with, step number one is the import of data. So uh, in some cases, you might not have your data living in your hard drive as a, as a simple spreadsheet. You might have data that's being generated from different applications, as, as Clarence said, maybe your in-house uh, CRM, maybe you have uh, a bunch of other uh, uh, applications that generate data that you need to report on, and perhaps they're not uh, directly accessible as files. Maybe you have them stored in your in-house database server. So we have a, a special tool for that. And as this graphic illustrates, your upload tool can query your database servers or large CSV files, and then stream that data to Zoho reports uh, through a firewall. So you can actually uh, specify your SQL select queries and then it talks to your DB server or the CSV files and then gets the data in. So with that, I'll actually jump into the, the product itself. So just to um, reorient ourselves, um, I imported a couple of uh, sheets. I set up a linkage and then created some reports so, uh, and an actual dashboard that put, put them together. So uh, this is, again, the, the actual... Uh, interface within the, uh, the, uh, the reporting database where you have the, uh, the tables and the uh, other objects listed on the left-hand side. And uh, all the actual objects that I'm accessing are, are showing up as tabs here. So the next thing that I want to show is to actually uh, prepare your data. So you have your data in, you, f you found a way to stream it using the upload tool and you have a large volume of data sitting in your account. The next thing is, uh, if you want to add some uh, more advanced processing to that data to make it acceptable from a reporting point of view, what, what options do you have? Now I have this little uh, table open, and you see it just has three columns. So if I go into the guts of it, if I show you the design, you can see that it's actually, uh, it uses an SQL query. So what this, this concept is, is that it actually lets you uh, merge two different tables using an SQL query, and that gives you the power to actually do some uh, custom, perf uh, make some uh, custom operations, as well as pick and choose specific columns that you would need. So you have the flexibility, if you have the knowledge of SQL, to actually not just use all the data that comes in, but pick out specific subsets and maybe do some transformations and join operations and have your data cleansed and ready to use so that it's in the format that best fits your reporting requirements. So this is uh, one of the features that we have. And the good thing is, once you have this query table set up, it can serve as the base uh, entity from which you generate your reports and dashboards. So uh, you don't have to bother about, uh, you know, you do this once, and then whenever the table, underlying table data changes, any of these tables that are referenced, this SQL uh, table will automatically refresh. So you just set it up once, and all the refreshing and everything happens automatically, and you can then just keep this in mind when you create your reports and dashboards. So with that, I will actually proceed to uh, 
the visualization part and walk you through some of the more uh, advanced settings that you have available so that you can make your charts look good. I'm just plotting a simple region by sales here. So this is how the default report looks now. Uh, you might want to choose to go with a different uh, set of colors. So right at the top here, uh, you have a list of uh, different types of charts. So if I want to change the, the visualization, I just can click on any of these tabs, and that will automatically reformat the chart so that, for example, if I'm having uh, something like this, let's say I just have three uh, uh, data items that I'm reporting on, I can have a simple pie chart so that shows you at a glance the share that each of them contributes to the, to the, to the total. Uh, in addition, if I want to have uh, control over some of the more uh, uh, involved aspects of the chart itself, so for example, if I want to change uh, the labels here, so it says sum of sales, I can actually go into the, the settings themselves and do that. So here we have the chart settings. And I'll just walk you through some of these. So uh, we have region here. And if I just want to have the sales here, I don't want to say sum of sales. So these are all just labels that I can change. Uh, in addition, if I want to specify a custom range and reporting interval, I can do that here as well. And then moving on more to the, the visual aspect, um, I can choose to set, uh, set up my colors. So maybe uh, I don't like blue, so if I just want to change that, I can just uh, go ahead and select another color. Anything really, so maybe this one. And at any point, I can just see a preview of what my changes would look, would look like. I don't have to save it and go back and come back to this. So similar to this, if I don't want any grid at all, I can just remove it completely so that it looks clean. So perhaps I don't want that clutter, that noise, that detracts from the data that the chart is giving me. So these are some of the uh, options that we have. So I'm just going to apply them. And you can see that it instantly reflects. So I'm just going to switch this to view mode to show you that you know, the sales has changed, the label, and, and everything has changed. Uh, so if you want to explore some of the more uh, advanced features. So we have this nice little threshold feature where uh, you have this specific expectation or this, uh, uh, this little marker that you want to see where you are against. So that's what the threshold is. So you can choose to specify a threshold. So I'm going to have sales here. Just call it sales threshold and have just an arbitrary value, really. So I can preview it. So if it's too low, I can go back. Right. So. Uh, these are all some visual elements that actually tell you a story when you see them in conjunction with the reports themselves. So I'll just make this a very large number. Really. That's apply. So there you see that I have the, the threshold line. So at a glance, it lets me see how well I'm stacking up against my own threshold. So uh, you can have different thresholds. You can have them colored separately. So uh, basically, you have markers against which you are uh, you're comparing your data. So let me go ahead and, and save this report. And again, as I did last time, uh, I want to highlight the importance of matching the report to its purpose. So you might not always find a graphical representation to be the best. So in some cases, the actual numbers themselves are important. So uh, I introduced the pivot table, so I'm going to go a little more into detail about uh, some of the more advanced capabilities of the pivot. So let me just go ahead to this table, plot a new pivot. Just plotting a date-wise uh, profit here. Now, I had mentioned that we have a range of uh, functions, mathematical functions here. So uh, I, I just selected some by default, but if I want to have other types of grouping, I can, I can select those as well. So you have some statistical functions, uh, running averages, and so forth. So all these are, are available in the product. So you're not just limited to uh, a simple set of, of metrics. So if you have something uh, 
like a comparison that you want to do year on year, things like that, they are, they are possible here as well. And then I had mentioned the uh, filters uh, feature before. So just to recap, this allows you to restrict the scope of the reporting just to uh, a subset. So you don't want to actually be uh, looking at all the data that you have. So in that case, you would just drop a field here. So in this case, I might drop a region. So I just want to select the, uh, the sales information for, let's say, Central and East. So I can have the, uh, these items included. And when I do it, I can actually click on the underlying data anywhere. And I see that it's only the Central and East data that's showing up. So um, I'm defining the scope of reporting here. And then we have the, the user filters, which is the, the view mode filters. So uh, I just want to draw a distinction between uh, these filters because they use the same word. There can be a confusion. So if I, just, if I want to restrict the whole report scope itself, I would use a, a, a report level filter. The user filter is where I want to give my end users the flexibility to actually slice and dice the data in, in different ways that they need. So uh, let me drop region here and go into some of the more advanced uh, configurations. So if I edit this, I can either just allow them to select a single value or maybe make it a multi-select box. So if I do this, so they will see all the distinct values. So right now, uh, I've removed West. So uh, if you have multiple values here, they can pick and select which ones they want to have uh, included in the report. They're not limited to just using one. So this is, uh, this is uh, a helpful feature that, that enables your end users to, to do analysis that they need. Just going to save this. All right, so just to recap where we are, um, we talked about the upload tool that lets you actually bring your data into the system. Uh, large volumes of data, that's a speciality. So if you have it in your database server or you have large CSV files, you can use the upload tool to bring that data in. And then after that, you'll have to decide on uh, the types of metrics that you need and you can plot them. You have a range of uh, analytical functions. But in some cases, there might be certain calculations very specific to your business. So they might not be available off the box. So in those cases, I will show you how you can define your personalized metrics so that you can use them directly in your report. So to switch back to the uh, sales data. So I've actually added a couple here. Uh, to start off, simply we have a very basic profit here, which is just the difference between sales and cost. And uh, it shows up as a separate column. And every time there's a new data row that's added, this calculation happens automatically. So it's similar to what happens in a spreadsheet. You say something like C3 equals uh, you know, A3 minus B3, something like that. So this is something that will be calculated for each incoming data row. And then we have something a little more detailed. So let's say that it's important to me to know by what percentage my salespersons are uh, you know, exceeding their quota or falling short of their sales target. So this is a function that lets you do that. So it's called uh, an aggregate formula. And um, it's actually a powerful tool that you would use to clearly define the metrics that are important to you. So in this case, it's going to be just a sum of sales uh, divided by the uh, average of the sales quota. And that's, we're using average because it's, it's just a single value. We just want to have an, uh, an aggregate function there. Um, if you want to have some help with the functions and manipulations, you actually have a whole host of uh, types of functions here. So you can manipulate dates, uh, numbers, strings, and so forth. So uh, there's a whole powerful set of tools that you can bring to bear so that you can use your raw data and, and uh, set it up to give you the metrics that you need that you can directly use. And similarly, we, I'm just going to go through another metric here. So this is just going to give you the sales for the eastern region alone. So 
uh, in some cases where you want to plot the entire data set against just a subset of that in the same value. So uh, let's say that you have entire sales versus just East region sales. So you want to see the comparison. So this is something that you can use for that purpose. So I was talking about uh, these uh, specific metrics that you can define and then use in your reports. And I had given you an example. And I was just going through the second one. So uh, in some cases where you want to uh, plot the entire region sales against just a subset of that, you want to hold uh, the second value somewhere so that you can plot it. So this is an example. So the name is here, and the, you can specify a data type. And the actual content itself here, uh, it just sums all the columns where the region is east. That's what it does. Now the next question is, how do you actually use them in a report? So I'm going to show you how that is done. So all I'm doing is, if you notice, there are these two fields that I showed you. They just show up alongside the, the other table fields right there. So it's just a matter of shunting them in. So this is something like what you can do. So you have the total region here, and then East region sales alone, and you have them side by side. So if you want to have a bar chart, you can just change the visualization. So uh, then once you have the report, again, you have the uh, same levels of uh, uh, control you have in terms of uh, the types of visualizations and then the individual look and feel elements and so forth that that's already in there and again so we uh, just to uh, connect us back to the flow that we're using we talked about bringing the data in we talked about doing some modifications so we have the uh, custom sql that lets you uh, play around with specific chunks of the data gives you more control gets your uh, lets you get your hands dirty and then you can define your metrics. So you have this uh, East region sales, or you have the specific uh, percentage or specific derived calculations that you have, and then you can directly plug them in and, and use them. So uh, the next step is, of course, to put them all together uh, into a dashboard. And uh, I've actually, I'm just going to use the same one that I showed earlier. So we have the sales dashboard here. You have these individual reports here, funnel charts, and so forth. Uh, one neat feature we have here is right at the top, you notice that there are three reports. So they just they don't say much. They just have a single number. So these are our KPI widgets. So they're just intended to just give you one number or a simple trend. So you look at it and say, OK, this is what is happening. So the first one just gives you the sales just as one number. The second one says, OK. This is the sales for the current year, and it has risen by so much from the previous year. So again, this is just something that gives you a very global view of where your business is headed and what top-level metrics uh, you know, can, can tell you. Uh, the third one is, is again, salesperson-oriented. So it says, this is the guy who's made you the most money, and this is the actual amount of money that he's made you. So these are the types of you know, high-level, strong metrics that, that can be uh, generated from within Zoho reports. And uh, this is actually a feature that we released in the near uh, past. So just a couple of months or so, it's been in the works for a while. So it actually lives inside the dashboard. Uh, you have to have a dashboard to create a widget, and I'll, I'll go through that process. So again, you have your multiple reports and tables here. So I, I just want to, don't want to spend too much time here. Now, once you have this set up, once you like, uh, all the reports that you're having in, again, the fourth step becomes the collaboration and the sharing, ma making sure it gets to the people who need to see it. So I had spoken a little bit about, uh, about this, and uh, I'll be expanding uh, a little more because this is a deep dive session. So some of your users will just be consumers. So they will just be people who will access your, the data and see what they want from it and then maybe export it and leave. But you also have some people who need to be creators or power users. So they need to have expanded privileges where you know, they actually work with you, they change stuff, they move things around, create things. So in Zoho Reports, we, can, we have support for both types of users. Um, if you have, for example, if you're a sales VP and you have a sales manager who needs to set some quotas, so you can actually 
give them the power user role at that data set level so that they can go in and, and, and do the things that they need. So it becomes completely collaborative. So you're all working in the same space. And uh, any changes that they make will be seen by you and vice versa. So uh, the power user will have uh, full control. And, but the thing is that it has to be given by the administrator. So as an administrator, you would pick and choose, OK, these guys need to be power users. And then you would give them that privilege. And that can be revoked at any time. So it's, it, it's all dynamic. So how that is managed is uh, once you create a reporting database, once you get your data in, you have this concept called database group. This is where you actually specify uh, or database owner, the last one here. So this is the, the power user concept here. So you would just add additional users here, and then uh, they would be able to actually go in and, and so do anything to the objects in that database. So they can add uh, data, create reports, change things around. So all these, uh, they can even share objects to other users. So within the context of this particular reporting database, they would have full control. So that is the, the power user role. Uh, and then you actually just add people, and then you just send them an invitation that you've been given this role. So they would then be able to access using their account and then uh, you know, make the changes that they need to. So once you have uh, your database uh, created and your collaboration done, uh, the next thing is to actually go through some of the, the privileges that you can offer to the end users. And uh, I gave you a little preview of that, but I'm going to expand on that a little more. So one way that you can enable people to generate their own reports is, of course, to make them a power user. But maybe you have some people who you want to give that power, but you don't want them to give that much uh, access to your database. So you can just enable them to create their own reports just by sharing a table alone to them. So what happens is when they log in, they would see that table, and they would be able to create the reports on top of that table. And once you revoke that permission, the whole thing is lost. So it's, it's, a bit of, it's, it's somewhere between a regular user and a power user, so you just pick out specific data sets to share with them, and they can then, uh, they will be able to create reports on top of that. So that is another uh, instance of collaboration as well. So uh, what we're doing now is we're actually exploring some of the sharing options with the dashboard. So this is where you specify the email addresses. Now, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, you have a whole list of fine-grained permissions that you can offer. Now, if you look at the option, the right options here, now, this applies to ta table rows. So if you're sharing a table to a user, just a table alone, you can allow them the capacity to just add rows or only modify or maybe give them the capacity to delete. So uh, if you look at it, there's uh, a very fine-grained set of permissions that you can give to your users. Uh, in addition, you can let your shared users also share to other users in turn. So it's one deeper level of sharing. So that is something that you can enable in case uh, you want them to be able to do that. And then this filter criterion is something that we had uh, uh, already s spoken about. So you have one master view, and you want to share it to different people with different filters applied. So I think I took the region example, region equals to west. And then uh, when that user logs in, they would be able to uh, see the entire dashboard uh, filtered. And I can, I can give you a sense of how that, that would look. So so this is the same concept, really. So if I select the region west, then that actually filters all the views in that dashboard. And again, this is a dynamic filter, a user mode filter. So this is exactly the type of views that you can share to your end users so that they will not be able to access any of the other, uh, other rows in, inside that data set. So uh, that, 
that actually brings us to point four, and uh, that's where the collaboration happens. So first we talked about the data, and then the preparation, and then the visuals, and uh, finally the, the collaboration aspect itself. Thanks.